So, this is Project Domus here, offering you a video analysis of the new Fires Collection 2016, released May 21st. May 21st? No, that's May 20th. 20th. May 20th. 20th. 21st is the day of Fire Emblem. Yes. You mean yes. today? Ow. <laughs> they won't even know that. Um, but, anyways, so the new set. Like the previous ones, features a lot of grade 4 strides. Like, Fire Squadron 2015 featured two strides for every clan. 2015 Winter featured archetype revival strides. Mm -hmm. But 2016 offers probably the biggest change because it introduces the expanded Stride Zone and G Guardians. So, yes. anyways, because of how important the set is, and well, to be honest, Fire Squadron is always important, we decided we might take our chances at analyzing each and every card in the sets. Just to see how it plays out for their respective clans, their respective decks, how it impacts their guardian potential with, in the case of G Guardians, and how they fare against really other decks. I am Mugen Glider. The guy next to me is Solstius. Hey, dudes. One other person on the opposite is, as we like to call him, the coach. Come on. And we have a guy we call Rin Rin. Rin Rin! Say hi! Hi! Better. I'm Phantom, not Rain Rain. <laughs> Phantom, jeez. Phantom Rin Rin then. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should edit that. Oh well. <laughs> uh, anyways. So we're gonna be doing, so we're gonna be analyzing cards in Clan Order. As for our, for our first card, it'll be Divine Knight of Rainbow Brocade, Clotes. The GR for Royal Paladin of this set. Which, frankly speaking, is happening every Fire's Collection. You yeah. get a GR every set. Well, not yeah, for Paladins? <laughs> uh, anyways, his skill is he has an act once per turn with a brave condition, so you need three or less cards to activate it. You counter blast one, soul blast one, and flip any number, flip a G zone unit face up. And then, as a result, you search your deck for up to the same number of grade two cards as the number of face up cards named Divine Knight of Rainbow Brocade Clotinus in your G zone and call them to separate rear guard circles. And then, if you're GB free, he gains a cont skill, where if you have five or more rear guards, this unit gets 10k and plus one critical. So, personally speaking, when I see this guard, I just think same blue dragon crossed with alt mile. Uh, like, that's a good backup in the worst case scenario. Well, uh, it's a good backup for when when you go all in as well, because you it is brave as well. No, nah, the the fight. So on a turn, you honestly, there's one problem with it. If you're going all out of your hat, it's generally a, it's a time when you have nothing to call out. And you pretty much, um... You're fucked. Yeah, and you're on Brave. Brave's biggest flaw is exactly that, because you have to overcommit. But, um, personally speaking, it's a good backup card in theory, I think. But I really don't see it being used that well outside of maybe, I don't know, Sanctuary God? Because, like, Sanctuary God conserves a lot of counter blasts. Oh, uh, well, well, think of it this way. It might be, like, Cortez is a decent first try. I mean, when you first start striking, your hand isn't going to be that big. Like, he, he can oh. be used as first strike. Not GB2. Oh, thank god. So his, okay. his search ability can be used for that. Mm, that's true. And then you can build him up from that point onwards. I guess in that point, it is a more budgetish aerial ult mile. Yeah, at this point, yeah, actually. Aerial yeah. Divine Knight is now oh, ridiculously priced. The crit is nicer. The, crit no, is the nice. crit's nice too. The crit's nice too. Yeah, but in the end, his problems are that I feel like he's trying to do so much. His Brave Condition does hamper him from mass usage. No, wait, never yeah. mind. The crit's not gonna kick it. It's GB3. Yeah. So, uh, but, but it's still uh, nice as a finish. Yeah. Yeah, you need G guys and everything. That's not Especially with you know when your when your hand is lower during those periods of, during the later later stages of the game. Uh, if you're playing a brave deck, you have no hand. No, the, only, the only problem is you can't get the full effect if you're using Link Joker if they have yeah, something locked. That is true. Yes, yeah. in general. Yeah. Overall, I say Kutenis is a situational card, but if you're losing, it ain't bad. Don't worry, I'll run four of it. Uh, unfortunately, though, <laughs> unfortunately for him, though. The only other strat unit that flips units face up is Tressing the Heavens. And he himself requires step as well. Mm. So Cortez's use in Old Mile decks especially is comes out of that unit. Mm -hmm. Unless we get another Blizzard equivalent when it comes to Generation Blasting. Alongside it, we have Generation Guards. So for Royal Paladin, we have Holy Dragon, Laser Guard Dragon. So uh, seeing as Generation Guards a new I'm mechanic... i my laser! <laughs> guard. Seeing as Generation Guard is a new mechanic, how it works is that if both players are grade 3 or more, you can discard a heal trigger from hand, and it enters the guard circle. Wait, what? 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 The... Oh, okay. So yeah. In the case of Royal Paladin, their one is called Holy Dragon Laser Guard, and when it's placed, if you have one or more grade 2 rear guards, it gets really plus 5k shield. 
You think it's really easy? Well, you have one or more grade two. There will be situations where you won't have the grade two. Yeah, that's true. When you play against Lin Choker, you don't have grade two on the field. No, it's not just that's, that. That's, that's, that's not just in a situational thing. Like, if they blow up your grade two, it's before they even start going on the attack, yes. then... Control is pretty effective against this guy. Um, I would say, really, he's... The, he's what you want your G Guardian to be at least as good as. Because he's saying the bar pretty low already. Mm. Um, and remember, the only deck that in Europa that emphasizes grade 2 really is currently Ultmile. That's mm -hmm. true. That's, so if you're playing something that's not Ultmile, Blazer Guard has a list, is not gonna go off as often. It's, I kind of feel like all the Royal Paladin cards, especially the new stuff, is like forcing you to overcommit so you get as much of these requirements off. That's what it feels like to me. So, I mean, it's one of my main clans, but for me, it's quite clunky when it comes to feeling it. Like, ugh. And I'll say this, though, with G guys in general, um, because they contribute to GB, a card like this could make you go same blow, air the Divine Knight much faster. That's so, that's, that's the benefit of being a G Guardian. Mm -hmm. Overall, I'd say Royal Paladin just said got decent stuff, but <laughs> Royal Paladin has way too much stuff already. And I don't want any more stuff anymore, I really don't. They... They get pretty good, man. Let's be honest here. They get pretty good. Moving from Royal Paladin, so we're going in, clan, in Nation Clan Order. We move on to OTT, who also re received a G rare this set in the form of Lord of Guidance Wakahirume. Nice art. I'll say that much. Um, mm. So she's GB2, auto. Wait. Oh, yeah, so she is auto. Um, Town Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, choose a face down copy of herself and put the face up. So she's a G Persona. When she attacks a vanguard, assuming your oracle condition, so five or more hand, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card, choose a card from your hand, and put it on the top of your deck. So essentially, just like in the anime, you can technically use triggers that you've already activated. Thoughts? If I recall, quite a lot of people actually overhyped this card, right? So making it say it's kind of broken or something? Uh, it's kind of a mixture. I've, se <clears throat> I've seen elements of both. I personally think that... Um, okay, so... Before G Guardians was a thing, Oral Condition is not that easy to fulfill before Drive Check. No. Like, it sounds easy for Oracle Think Tank. It was, say you're playing Suicide though. Even though you're technically drawing cards, you, what, really what you're doing is you're replacing the cards you discarded or committed to the field. So getting that actual 5 card in hand, isn't actually that easy. It's just committing to the field while not losing anything. Yeah. That's what it is. Name me an Oracle, name me an Oracle Thinking card that draws you two cards while losing nothing. Uh, kind of like boss cards do that. Boss cards. Even then, you have to write the units. Yep, exactly. So, it's so... Uh, yeah. and, and a lot of the effects are usually... Like, Susano is on stride. That means you're losing a card anyway. Yeah. yeah. So basically, Wakahume's timing is not good for her condition. Because you would need the five hand before you actually attack with her. And, um... Okay, so that's the problem without G-Guards in mind. With G-Guards in mind, her GB2 is actually less of a problem, because you can technically G-Guard and Wakahiro main next turn. Yeah. Problem with me is that Oracle Condition is still debatable whether you can really fulfill it. That's when you took all the damage. Soul Blast is not preferable at times. I mean, even with Kusanagi. Look at OTT's Susanoo deck. You have Sumiyoshi, which uses Soul. Mm -hmm. You have Akagi, which uses Soul. And then you have Wakahiro who uses Soul. You have Psychic Bird and, and Kusanagi to Soul Charge, but that's just a lot of Soul Blasting you're doing right there. Sumi Yoshi's the thing that's keeping you in the game in a way, because he beats down. Oh yeah, that's true. And then the other thing is, like, Waka Hirume, you would need a trigger in your hand before you actually use her skill. Or... The, the, that's, the, that's a perfect idea, because you would then put the trigger on top. If you just drew a trigger and then just put it on top, what do you gain? Nothing. And the thing is, if the Vanguard's attacking, and if you have something that requires a top card to be something that you know, you're not going to be able to combo it off, because like, it's during an attack phase. If it was an activation card, I would say this is probably better as a card. Activation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Personally, I've, I still think it should have been like, draw 2, because I, I look at it and say it's not really a plus. You get a trigger effect off, under the most contrived scenario. I, I can't even call this a plus, it's plus 0. Yeah, so um... It has potential. Well, it can be draw triggers technically a plus. <laughs> oh yeah, OTT plays draw triggers when now? <laughs> Never. Very rarely. <laughs> and in this case, draw trigger will probably be the worst trigger to activate. Yeah. Because it makes the least impact in this case. 
Wakahirume is... It's a high risk, high reward card, depending it's on the scenario. Decent. Uh, that's, um, aside from aside from Susanna, you could run another deck, but let's be honest here. Balsus does not have their own stride, even then they're probably just going to attack Megazuchi, Kami Susano. Da. Magus. Glow Magus. Glow Magus better. Uh, witches, they have their witch stride. Sukiyomi has her own stride. Sukiyomi can try to take a transition to this, but still you have, you're competing with other cards. Oh, here they just a weird card. I, I think she's okay. I, uh, she, in my opinion, she really doesn't deserve g -Rare. Like, triple rare? Maybe. g -Rare? Nah. She's okay. I, I strictly think she's okay. Yeah. As for the generation guard for OTT, honestly, they got pretty good. They got Sunrise on High Godhawk Ichibyoshi. So everyone remembers Godhawk Ichibyoshi, that luck sacker. Oh, yeah. Anyways, uh, when this unit is placed on Guard Circle, if the number of cards in your hand is three or more, this unit will get 5k until end of that battle. Arguably one of the pretty easy cards to activate. You just need a hand of four and you would get this card for sure. Mm. And then you can <coughs> continue contri contributing with more cards from your hand. But um, overall, like that's just a really easy effect to get off. Like this is why G guards should be easy to fulfill. Really, there's not much to say about HBO sheet. It will usually work because OTT in general usually maintains a high end. This isn't even Oracle, which is good because Oracle is too strict of a condition sometimes. Like what kind, for example? Not OTT expert. No, Oracle as in the keyword. Oh, I the keyword the itself. I would argue at times Oracle is worse than Brave at times. Okay. Especially if you get cards like Wakahirume. Oh yeah, okay. But Ishiboshi, there's not much to say. He's just good. He's just good. Hey, it's Ishiboshi. It's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Next on, we move to Shadow Paladins. Who, if I remember... Probably got one of the most hated G units in this set. It's very distressing. <laughs> Enough of the puns, man. They got Dark Dragon, the Stress Dragon. Cool artwork. When you read a skill bow, act skill. Once per turn. Count blast free. Soul blast free. Choose a face down card from your G zone and Wait. turn a face up. Soul blast free? Soul blast free. Oh, God. That is expensive. If only it was an auto on attack, it would be so much better. Mm. Even then, still that's hard to fulfill. Hey, it'd still be better. Alright, so choose any number of your rear guards and retire them. Yep. Your opponent chooses the same number of his or her rear guards as the number of your rear guards retired with this effect and retires them. So they choose it, okay? Yes. If the total number retired with this effect is six or more, draw two cards, soul charge, counter charge one, and this unit gets 20,000 until end of turn. Good bait stick, at least. But 20,000 is definitely obscene. Yeah. Um. But there's one problem. You can't use those double sack cards. Yes, that, that's something we have to. That's something that really needs to be clarified. Cards like David and also won't work with this because of the fact that they pay for a cost. But his retire your own units is not a cost, so they won't work. The the thing is like, ironically enough, a card like this is better used outside of a cleric deck because like cleric decks already have their own way of doing things. Yeah, but cards. Here's the thing. Can anyone name me here a Shadow Paladin deck with a consistent Soul Charge engine? That's not Claret. Uh, that's true. That's what true. deck has a better Soul Charge engine than Claret? What do you think, Phantom? You play a lot of Shadow Paladin? Well, I think... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that Really? Means... Claret Soul is Voidman Diablo. Voidman Diablo has Hoel. How long will Hoel last in the field? Maybe and two turns at To be honest, if you want the Soul Charge, you need the Kaiden for the Hoel to Soul Charge. Yeah, Kaiden into Kaiden Hoel. Very specific. In the Gladius Sword, you have the Abyss Summoner, but you need to set some pain for Abyss Summoner to Soul Charge. Yeah, that's still more consistent. Yes. Um, and also, here's another thing. Shadowlands tries up to this point, there are way too many Soul Blasters. Well, okay, not, the, not way too many, but Orgeyser Soul Blasts. How many people here use Orgeyser? Oh, right, we're not on face, right. A um, lot of people yeah. use Orgeyser. Special Blaster Diablo Soul Blasts. How many people use Special Blaster Diablo? Everybody. Basically, every deck in the sh every Shadow Fallen deck now is special. Except me. But um, basically, this guy right now competes with those two because of his Soul Blast cost. And even then, Soul Blast free, that sounds just impossible unless you're Clarus one. Should I put a clip of us using it? No. Please don't, man. This, no. this guy is. Yeah, since the guy who made me use Murakuma, made me use this card against Murakuma. Eh, quite you. Uh, and... I, I still can't play Soul Blast, right? Because, like, I expected this to be a Soul Blast too, I don't know why, but... 
If it's Soul Blast 3, my um, thoughts on it is a bit more. Also, look at it this way. It's a unit that retires units for account for basically sacrificing free to suck to kill free. Huh. What unit does that already in Shadow Or guys are damned. It draws two if you sac if you retire free. If you retire six. <laughs> Who does that? Or guys are damned. Uh. Who he gets power, I guess. Or guys dragon does that as well. Phantom Blast the Break Ride it's does just that as well. Hard to say if this guy really trumps any other Shadow Balance ride. It's a niche card. It's a niche card. It's, it's truly a niche card. Well, it could be a budget deck. And to be yeah. honest, if you cannot, re if the total card retire are not sick, you cannot basically you gain you gain nothing. You lost you three really cards, but you gain nothing. Mm. This guy honestly competes with too many cards. No, but it's still it's a niche card that's good against specific matchups. Like you look at some of the control decks. Like right now, control is divided into two types. You got destruction focus and disruption focus. So like you look at Kagero and stuff. They don't rely too much on the rear guards, so even if you destroy them, you're not really benefiting too much. They're not benefiting too much either. But if you look at something like Mega Colony, for instance, they require a bit of the rear guards to like combo things off, and that means yours as well. So if they stun your rear guards for benefits on the next turn. Problem with that, Orgaz is damned. Yeah, still. No, that's really the problem. He, he competes with an Ori established card. It's really his very problem. And Aurakaiser then can attack with a critical if you have three or more Aurakaiser in the G zone. It is exactly. a 20,000 or more is actually a legit number, but if your point is 5 damage, that's the only point where it really matters. He's, so, so he's really a niche card. So I'll, I'll you, say this, though. Considering Aurakaiser's price right now, he's your budget Aurakaiser. Mm, yes. Budget. And to be honest, it's a pressure when the opponent has 5 damage. Uh, this guy's just too controversial. Let's move on. Unless you have a red card that. When you retire, it can You know what, actually, this set, man, Shaman was arguably most controversial because they arguably got one of the worst G guys as well. Worst? Dark Knight Ludwig! Oh man! When this unit is placed on Guard Circle, choose one of your grade 1 or less rear guard. Wait. Grade 1 or less? Yeah. You can't and choose you may move it to your Guard Circle. How do you forget? I used it on you! Okay, so, um, Dark Knight Ludwig. Basically, you sacrifice one of your units to get a 5k to 10k shield. When other G Guardians just give you the straight up shield. Is there anything positive to say about this guy? Well, with an extra 5k shield, you throw in a grade 0 from your field. So, because I want to do that! Because, let me get this straight. Situations! So, you lose a heal trigger from hand for the cost, and then you lose another unit as a cost. If so, you want to get the 5k. Yeah, or the 10k, depending on the unit you're sacrificing. Still situational! Oh, let's not forget, he's bad against control. Yes, definitely bad yes. against control, yes. Let's be honest here, Shabhan got the worst deal. About time too, actually. Oh! Harsh! <laughs> harsh! The Shadow Paladin dislike around here. Okay, I mean, man, Shadow Paladin is a... I think Phantom Renren Ren isn't very happy about it. Hey, they, they're <laughs> overplayed way too much. Like, seriously. It, I'm, I'm getting sick of Paladins, and I actually main one of the Paladins. It's like, ugh. Anyways, we move on to Gold Paladins, and we have... Golden Eye of Incandescence, Arrakis. Okay, nice artwork. Ah, uh, so-so effect. Uh, also, can I last one? So last one. When you see this place on Vanguard Circle, you may pay a cost. If you do, look at two cards from the top of your deck, search for up to one card from one of them, call it to open the rear guard circle, and put the rest of the cards on the bottom of the deck in any order. Oh, that's the first. Deck in any order. That's been a long time since it's done. No, in that case, it's actually pretty good. Anyways, your resident GP player, by Ezel and Libreus, does how does this card feel to you? Hmm? Let me read properly. Let's see. This is highly confusing. <coughs> Reminds me of freak it, like a stride version of <coughs> what's his name? <sighs> Description, please. Liberator card, can't last one. Liberator card. On call. On call. On call from deck. No, on call from hand. Oh, Agavel. 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 A stride version, Agavel. It's you a... mean the rank one for Guardian, right? No, grade two, grade, grade two, two. Aglovale. Oh, grade two. You just call it Calbus one without the Soul Blast, and you call unit. Yes. I guess. If this this should have honestly should have given at least a bit more, given the unit power. Yeah, but then you can argue that's better than Campbell. It's an easier way to like get unite off. Definitely helps unite, and and it you but, soul. Yeah, they, but they cover different. But they do cover different things. Like um, Campbell's on hit. 
It's a pressure cup. That one actually, you're right. It does make Unite easier because you, you, if you use a Gurga, you get the two off yeah. immediately. The, the thing about but Unite... Gurga I, uses both Counter Blast and Soul Fall. I know, that's the This affects your late mid-game as well. Mm. Like, there will come times where you can't use your other effects. Gold Paladin's more decision-making based now, if you think about it, even though it's easy to wield. And Brockus is really, in my opinion, a one-off, even in Gurga. Mm -hmm. Um, and also, in my opinion, Brockus has nearly no place in decks outside Gurga. Because if you're playing Liberators, they got Holy Flame. Holy Flame does this guy's effect. And builds up as you, as, and costs, as you use Holy Flame. And he can do it multiple times if you have more face-up versions of him. And this guy, doesn't even one blast. this guy doesn't compare to Ezel. Ezel... Ezel you can just do at any time. And Honestly, Ezel's the most powerful superior core card. <coughs> core Paladin. Right now? In yes. a way, yeah, that's true. A single, well, Immediately single. speaking, yeah. Ebrakis just finds a lot of stiff competition. It, surprisingly enough, it's good in a lot of budget decks from the way it's been. That's all it is, yeah. that's the case, man. Ebrakis, in my opinion, it's okay. One off. One off? Or three off, depending on, like, um, well, depends on the amount of money Let's put it this spent. way. The apparent guy who really plays Skull Paladin around our soul man hates it. Which one? Oh, oh, I see, I see. Yeah. And after that, we got Sacred Heaven Prayer Master Rhea. Uh, I don't remember Skull Paladin having so much naval revealing, but whatever. I'm not arguing. Anyways, uh, when this is placed on guard circle, if you have two or more rear guards, this unit gets plus 5k shield until the end of that battle. So, um, I actually thought this unit was like, three or more rear guards, and I thought it was very average, but then someone told me it was just two or more rear guards, and you get 5k shield. It's good. It's a very good card. Nice little lady. It's pretty good. It's consistent shield for the most part. Mm. Still vulnerable to control, though. Yeah, but... Hey. Plus, it doesn't exactly complement the new G-Guard Slamy, because Slamy returns G unit back to the deck. G unit back to the deck? No, unit. Oh, unit. Okay. Three guard. But as it stands right now, um, Rhea, she is decent. I don't think... I I can't really complain about this one, though. I really can't complain. It's like, it's solid well, enough. It's solid. It's, solid. Enough. it's easy It's easy to, you know, to access. Easy to use. Well, the price is pretty high right now, actually, I heard. Wait, how much is it? Uh, it's one of the more demand G-Guards, because... Was it $5 in the store? Five, everything's $5. I said like so. the R, because... Ugh. Probably, that's probably one of the reasons why its price went up as well. Ah, quite. Hey, it's like... It's all... That's the, you know, that's a trend. Yeah, it's not... When you think about G-Guards, there's not much to say about the ones in this, because they all cons... Most of them are at least consistent-ish. Consistent enough, yes. Okay, who here is an Atrophobia player? Oh, man, am I the Atrophobia player? Hi. Um, I like Japanese. <coughs> well, I guess we're not the best commentary. For Age Rover, they got Hoy Seraph. Uh, Zakario. Ze yeah, Zakario? Zakario. Oh, Zakario. Mm. Yeah, whatever. Is your name Zakario? Zakario. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> Act. <laughs> once per turn, count boss one, choose a face down card from your G zone and turn a face up. That's immediately like Gabriel GB2 yes. shenanigans right there. Mm -hmm. Until in a turn. This unit gets, if you have a face-up card in your damage zone, all of your rear guards in your front row get plus 3k. If the number of cards in your damage zone is... Four or more? Five! Five. This unit gets 10,000. Oh, it was five? No. Okay. All of you for no gain 10k. No, no, no. If this unit gets 10k. Just herself. So, um, she's like an early game card, if you want to go for Gabriel's GPT and melee, I guess. I guess you can use two of her at best, because, like, she has that bonus for late. Uh, Gabriel gets plus 2k, and then basically you would... Then plus 3k, so that's like a 5k bonus to that one rear guard. It could technically work out. It's definitely an option for the new Angel Photo deck. Uh, I don't know about an old Angel Photo deck. I, I would say people would spam her just for the fact they could proc Gabriel's G break off easily. Yeah, uh, that, you that, can use her in the next set to unflip the new G, the new strike for the Angel Feather. Why would you do that? You don't need to. Gabriel unflips herself. Oh, really? Gabriel's, okay. not, Gabriel's not like Excalib or Blade Master. So in this case, Zachariah is really just being used for the GB2. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, um, she faces competition with Celestials, No Seal, and such. But we're not talking about those decks. Though. Yeah, but those are archetype decks. Like, <coughs> as it stands, she seems to be only for Gabriel, really. Mm, I'll have to do a bit more research on that, I guess. I guess, we're well, no, well, <coughs> Angel of that I've long stopped playing Angel of a long time ago. Likewise, else. Legions, as far as I went as well, so I have to really check. Manatron was my thing. <laughs> but, um, uh, with, the power, with the power of gain that Angel of has, you can make that plus 3k relevant. The 10,000 fills just tacked on for the 
you know, you, you could still drop 10k shields from your opponent's hand at the very least if you like time a few things, right? That's she, what I can say. She's certainly an option for Angel Void decks. Yep, she is. But to be honest, like the other strides in this set, they feel like they're made for the stride deck. Yeah. Anyways, we move on to our next unit, Holy Seraph Orpheo, who is the G guard of Angel Forever. I heard she was considered one of the worst ones, actually. Wait, what's the requirement? If the number of cards in your damage zone is four or more, this unit gets plus 5k shield. Oh, yes. Well, it could be an endgame shield. That's yeah. the problem! <laughs> a lot of people hate the fact that it's an endgame shield. Late game. Like, the assumption is Angel just tanks all the damage. Note on the <coughs> skill, it says continuous for the skill. So, there is a chance that the Bushiroad could provide some kind of card that applies self damaging cards activated to before it self damage. Yeah. It hasn't happened so far. Rescue immediately recovers anyway. So there's no point where this card will activate at the same time. That is true, but it might be outside the rescue factor. Who knows? We could get something that like temporarily deals damage to you for bonus. But it needs to be for the duration of the guard step. Hmm. Unfortunate. As she's saying she's um well I'll put it this way, if we got that other G guard which is a rescue one, that G guard is also debatable with whoever it's really that great. Mm, I saw that one, yeah. Um because like you have to figure out to get a trigger to make it useful, or you do get a damage check, I guess, which works with Gabriel, but there are times it will fail. And also, Broken Heart is a thing, I guess, as well. Play. Seems like recently, Angel's defensive options feel a bit more, a bit less consistent than other clients. But to be honest, I think we've all stopped playing Angel Ever for a while, ever since that stand trigger was released. What? <laughs> that stand trigger? That horrid, horrid thing. What is meta? What is meta? That stand trigger, man. <laughs> Unlike other stores, man, we stopped playing Angel because of it. It was it was getting tiring. Boring too. You wait thirty minutes to play again that day. <laughs> I it was the first time in my whole life where a deck of mine that got a brand new set of oversleeves getting grimy from just one game. Which normally takes me around ten games to get grimy from. Oh yes, because it was so long. Yes. Oh god. This one. Anyways, move on to Genesis. Beast Slayer, Military Deity Tear. Really impressive name, impressive artwork. If I remember, the effect was underwhelming. Indeed. Indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Act. Once per turn. They're all once per turn, damn it. You wanna spam it? Go nuts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Soul Blast Free. Look at the top card of your deck. Put it on the top card, top or bottom of your deck. Mm -hmm. So, a Matarasu like effect right there. Yes. Until end of turn, this unit gets when your drive check reveals a grade one or grade card, you may soul charge free. Alright, I'll say one thing though. It's probably better than the Regalia Stride. It does but, set up fields depending on what you're adding, so like it does help you with comboing things off. Actually, yeah, that's true. Um with Fenrir, the problem with the problem at the at the time was Doom Brace or uh Dion. Yeah. The thing was like Dion could not ensure that you would soul blast to use Fenrir's skill. Well, Doombrace, let's be honest here, is just so spammable. It is. Doombrace? Who designed Doombrace? It feels a bit ridiculous in a way now. To you be honest, Doombrace, I think Doombrace is one of the best draw in the Genesis. Doombrace probably is the best draw Genesis has for the first time. The power and the soul chart after that. Mm, yeah. That's why Doombrace and that's, is still well sought after. And that's the problem. Tear is competing with Doombrace. Tear is your first draw in this case. Most of the time. If you use it afterwards, it probably to recoup soul. Mm. What tier offers you is that you know where your drive check is, or you can change your drive check. Which is decent, but... And you can control what goes into your soul more easily as well. Yeah, so he recoups soul as well. Wait, 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 the card has to be checked, right? Does that mean the check card goes into soul, or the ones after it? Um, I think it's card after. Yeah, it would be the cards after. Oh. So basically, you check a, you have to check a grade 1 and grade up. Hmm. So he can recoup, basically you soul blast 3, and you can theoretically recoup 9 soul. It's probably gonna be like 3 to 6, but... Yeah, yeah. Again, Doombrace soul charges as well! And when Doombrace gives 5k power to 2 units, but this guy might get you a trigger, is that really a big sale? Debatable. Like... This, that's just it! You compete with Doombrace! Well, it's so hard! Unless you have a unit that for every card soul charge, you get 1k. Put it this way, um, even the Witch deck has Clove, who's pretty much Mega Mint Doombrace. Regalia Stride is not that good, she just recruits more soul. And She's a bit too slow to be honest. And outside of that, we're really just looking at Fenrir at that point. Fenrir. Always the Fenrir. Tear 
<coughs> All I can say is Tear Off is an alternative first strike for Fenrir decks. That's true. But let's be honest here, if you don't have your Doom Braces, yeah. When you when you play Doom Brace, you never go back. Because Doom Brace is so good. Doom Brace is like a drug. You cannot stop using it. Oh my god, even Jin who plays Witches goes on about how good Doom Brace is. And he has Clove! <laughs> have, we, have you burst Clove? I did. 5k okay. to the whole field! <coughs> and a critical! Oh, baby, even better. If the Legion, of course. Oh, if you're Legion. But still, it's a Legion deck. And which the is a 5k deck. is mm -hmm. the continuous ability. Moving on, we have Goddess of Seven Colors, Iris. Now, um, she's a funny generation guard. Like, she's the first generation guard we've gone through that I can say pretty much the top of the tops. When is going to place a guard circle? Choose up to three cards from your drop zone and put them into your soul. If three cards was put, this unit gets plus 5k shield at the end of the battle. I'm sorry? Wow. If three cards were put... So basically you just soul charge three from the drop zone. Controlled, I like if it. If you play Witch, you know what this basically means. Hey, how do you like it like the CEO CEO in Russell? Yeah. So, uh, really? Oh my god, Idris, oh that's true. She you, can, you can choose like... Right? She'll soul charge all your Norns back. This is probably yeah. the most adaptive G-Guy I've seen. And then next one you can uh, 15k last with critical. That's pretty, that's pretty good actually. Um. Minerva, it would recover your soul as well. Witches is probably the one that benefits the most, because witches would just basically get all the units back. Mm. Which can now technically play a Mirage kind of setup. Like, they wouldn't even care about control. Oh, yeah. And the Iraq still likes a hit with power. We get to go every time. I'm not going to say this card's broken, but this card carries so much potential for Genesis. It's too versatile for G-Guard. And I like it. I probably spam this if I play Genesis. She's the best one we've seen so far. Yeah, so far. So, so far, far, man. Like, there are G guys that are just fulfill the 5k shield. Then there are G guys that take that clan to a new level. Just like that's like how I wish the um the Angel Phantom was. You instead of the cost, you put one card temporarily and then you swap it over afterwards. <laughs> that's funny coming from you because you're the guy who hates Mercy Angel the most. Hey, just because I was using a rush deck against the uh, against what? What's his name again? Robert. No. Gabriel. Gabriel. That was. The toughest game I've had in a long, in a long time. time. This guy went in without knowing what Gavrilo does, basically. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, that game was a half an hour game. Anyways, we'll just cut here for now.